The Rock and Roll Coffee Show is brought to you by Writers and Rockers Coffee Company, keeping the music and memories alive with some damn good coffee. Visit them at writersandrockerscoffee.com. And Retroactive, located at Broadway at the Beach in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. 70s, 80s, 90s retro. Shopretroactive.com. It's the Rock and Roll Coffee Show. Yeah, we do. But yeah, man, so you've been busy since the last time we spoke. Yeah, how long has it been? Uh, I don't even know. You were on episode, I think, 72. I do one roughly every other week, and we're on 103 or so. So it's been a little bit. Yeah, it's Probably. been a little bit. Yeah. We're, we're growing, man. It's um, uh, It's been an incredible couple of years. Um, you know, we're trying to, you know, establish our brand uh, and and what we do across the world, um, you know, I'm a big believer in rock and roll coming back. Um, not necessarily coming back, but coming back to the forefront. Not coming back altogether, but coming back to the forefront and you know overtaking pop and hip hop and rap and everything again. And I believe it is coming back. Um, do you? very much? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really do. I really do. And I think you know we're betting a lot on the fact that it is coming back. Um, but you know, you know, to me, rock and roll was strongest in the 70s, you know, with Zeppelin and the Stones and the Who and, you know, even the Doobie Brothers and Steely Dan, all that kind of stuff, you know, guitar bands. Yeah. Um, you know, great guitar. Um, and I and I really feel like we are in a position where um that is coming to the forefront now. And, you know, just with you know, our signings of I mean, you you look at our recent signings of um you know, Riley's LA Guns and Faster Pussycat and Stephen Pierce, different rats doing things with us and um, Gilby Clark and Dizzy Reed and um, Frank Farrar from Guns N' Roses and his band Pisser. And, you know, I could go on and on and on. Um, yeah. Guitar, rock and roll, um, dirty, down. Uh, that's the way it should be. And and I believe that, you know, we're at the forefront of pushing this through and not just bands that have been around for a while, up and coming bands. I've got a slew of up and coming bands out of the UK, out of Australia, out of America. I mean, this drama and um, uh, them guns in um, LA, uh, great guitar bands. And, and, I, and I think at the end of the day, um, you know, whether it is old, old country, rock, metal, we sort of got it, got it covered i mean we announced yesterday the melody brothers which is brett scallion from um fuel his new band okay and that was the first thing i saw in the morning when i woke up yeah yeah so that's um that's had a great that's had a great effect on um you know everyone looking at what you know what he's about to do next um the answer out of ireland's got a new album next year haven't had an album in seven years i'm um, hardcore superstar behind me here and crash died out of sweden and killing it across the world so you know there's a lot of bands that we're involved with that are really um, making a difference, and they're selling albums, they're selling albums, and selling merch, and you know it's exciting to be part of it. And and you know we put our money where our mouth is with it. And we there was an article on on us in Rolling Stone. Um, did, I don't know if you got to see that. I did. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And that's you know I, we normally keep our head in Australia down with PR. Um, I just normally concentrate on the rest of the world, but that came out in on the Rolling Stone Australia site last uh, week i think it was or the week before and that's that really summed up where we are that was a great article um it, it's basically giving the artists and the bands um a, a, a true right to passage of what label they want to be part of now we are a true alternative to the you know the nuclear blasts and the pavements and the frontiers and the cleopatras and um, all those guys that have been out there for a long time we're giving the bands the artists the the managers a true alternative label that they can deal with and i would go on record to say that our passion um uh, for the bands and for what we do is unmatched it really is do you think um, that's it, your selling point well no i think uh, no i think our selling point is the entrepreneurial spirit mm-hmm. to do with the label i think our, our our selling point for sure is the fact that uh, we have a we have a, a, a split between an old school approach and a new school approach mm-hmm. the old school approach is things like this. We're on Zooms, we're in meetings, we're brainstorming 
all the time with bands, trying to work out which is the best way to bring it to market. And when we bring something to market, it's not just putting a press release out and, and praying to the gods. It's really getting involved in things. You know that we've got that sports and entertainment division. We're involved mm. with the UFC. You know, our music's getting played over music videos for fighters. We're involved with boxing. We're involved with the soccer. We're involved with the Formula One. So we're always looking at different ways to bring the music to the public, bringing um, bands' music to other people's fans. So, for example, if we've got a fighter that we're um, Andrea KGB Lee, for example, if we're sponsoring her and she's pushing a song on her channel to her hundreds and hundreds of thousands of viewers, uh, um, uh, followers, then that's the first time they've heard that song. Then that move across and they'll follow the band and listen to the band song. And I've seen the real data on that and it works. Mm-hmm. And we're the really promotional. It is. We're the only record label doing that. So it's a, I think it, our, um, our cornerstone is the entrepreneurial spirit that we have. And I look at things differently. I don't run this like a traditional record label. And I think that's the breath of fresh air and that's what's going on. And look, we don't get everything right. We fuck things up. But the difference I think with an Aussie running um, a global company is if we make a mistake, we will apologize and fix it. If Mm -hmm. we do it well, then we will celebrate it with you. And if someone's got a problem, fucking give me a call, give me an email, give me a zoom, whatever, let's sort it out. So, you know, I'm just not interested in the bullshit um, red tape um, music uh, industry garbage. That's the last thing I need. It's hard enough. Um, you know, we've got 12 international record labels now and um, around 500 bands. Yeah, so, that's crazy. So, mate, you want to be with me? I'll do all I can to take you all the way. If you want, don't want to be with me, fuck off and go and do it yourself. Yeah, you, you yeah. know what I mean? It's as simple as that. It's 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 as simple as that. I'm <laughs> we're with you all the way, man. But if you don't want to be part of it, fuck off. So yeah. no one's holding it. It's easy. So, you know, it's 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 a good setup. I've got some incredible things coming up um that I'm really excited about. We've got an incredible team that works for us. We just started up Archangel Records, which is two very, two young, very entrepreneurial female um, executives that work for me wanted to set up a real female driven label. So um, I've supported them in that and they've started that up and got some great bands on there. So there's a whole lot of different things happening that I think are very relevant for today as well. Mm-hmm. For the company. And um, it looks exciting. It's really, really exciting. Yeah, it's fantastic. And I think I told you before, I, I might have I might have told it to Jizzy, but I said if, if I ever put anything out now, Golden Robots, the record label I'd want to be with. I'd love to put you, I'd love for, to put music out for you. Yeah, for everything that I mean, everything that you just said, that's the reason. I mean, it's like a family. It is, it is. It's a rock and roll family. And you know, you see, you look at Instagram or Facebook or any of the socials and you see bands. Um welcoming other bands to the label because whenever someone joins like the melody brothers for example mm. um we tile up and we do a press release and we do a social media splurge um and you see other bands welcoming them to the label well, i don't see that anywhere else right you yeah, know and look at the end of the day i'm not saving kids lives here i'm not a neurosurgeon i'm i'm putting rock and roll out i'm putting music out i've just got passion behind it and i understand and I, I ask the bands what they want. I ask the bands where do they want to be and who, you know, where do you want to be in five years? What do you want out of this? And I don't think anyone normally asks them questions like that. Um, it's normally, you know, most labels are about, you know, that that square peg into the square hole. Mm-hmm. And I look at things completely differently. Uh, I always have, I've always done that my whole life. I've always been very entrepreneurial and I look at things differently. Mm-hmm. Um so I think that they appreciate that because they feel like, see, th- this is what you want at the end of the day. You want an artist or a band to feel like they've got support. You want them to feel like you've got their PR, their marketing, their distribution, um, and everything that comes along with um, uh, putting out an album, a piece of music. Um, you, they, you want them to feel like they've got that support. And if they've got that support and they feel comfortable being creative, because, you know, all these artists are creative, they're like chefs. Um, I used to own a whole sure. lot of pubs and restaurants. So they're like chefs. There's that creative, that, that creative side drives them. So they might not be the best people with um money. They might not be the best people with um remembering what needs to be um on the shopping list, but I tell you what, they can write a song and play live and record it better than anyone you know. So a creative um needs that support. And if they have that support, then you're hoping as the label that 
they will write and record the best music possible because they're in the right frame of mind and they're yeah. in the right mindset. And if we can get their narrative right on who they are to the world and what they're trying to do and there's that authenticity there, I think it's a winning formula. I really do. I think that it gives us the best shot. I mean, yeah. who the fuck knows anymore in, in, in this industry? Um, I, I know that you ain't going to buy yourself uh, a mansion in Los Angeles unless you've got all the pieces of the puzzle. And the pieces of the puzzle are your Spotify, your iTunes, your, your title, your merch, your vinyl, your CD, uh, your record label, your management, who you're touring with, who you're not touring with, all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. You've got to have all these pieces right. Mm hmm how does a band make money these days? Like what, what's their top revenue source? Look, I work with bands that have got billions of streams and that's with the B and I work with bands that have got, you know, on Spotify that minus 1000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I work with bands all the way along. And you know what? I got to be honest. We treat all bands exactly the same. The only difference awesome. is budgets. Mm -hmm. It's just budgets. It's mm -hmm. just different budgets. So I think to make money these days, you got to start with the right song you got to have a good song. The song is everything. If you don't have the right song and it doesn't resonate, then it's going to make it much harder. So once you have the right song and then you build the right campaign and the right marketing set up around it, you can put yourself in a position where it's like an octopus. So the head of the octopus is the song. So everything that comes off of that is potentially a revenue source. Yet you can make money on digital. I know, I know plenty of bands that get really decent royalty checks. Mm -hmm. So... That's one, that, that's one tentacle, let's call it, for the sake of this discussion. One tentacle is um, uh, the DSPs, the, the, the digital service uh, providers or platforms, whichever you want to say. So that's iTunes and Spotify and Tidal and all that stuff. The second one is your physical product, second tentacle. Um, we do a lot of vinyl, and we do vinyl yeah. well. I love, you know, that, that's that's hardcore superstars. Right? So in I hardcore love that super, band. Yeah, great, great band. band. I mean, look. Fold out, nice. um, linear notes, um, uh, you know, pictures, and um, beautiful grey. So it's not just awesome. a, it's not just a boring one sleeve black album, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we 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 try to do everything properly, so that gives the band something to sell. Now we do. We've been doing a lot of seven inches. I'm doing a Devo seven inch at the moment for the devotional conference coming up. Um, it's in either September, or October uh, in America. So we're doing seven inches. We're doing CDs. We're doing cassettes, and obviously we're doing merch. So mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. are other tentacles. Your physical product, and I've got to say, um, the vinyl and the CD really is a piece of merch when you're on the road. Mm -hmm. It's just another mm -hmm. piece of merch that you can sell. So. You've got your digital um, uh, revenue. You've got your physical revenue, and that's whether you're on the road or whether it's through our website or in a shop. Um, uh, it's in Amoeba in Hollywood, wherever it is. Then another, um, obviously, a tentacle is touring and getting on the road and making money if you're touring. So I think that those are your, most, your three or four most important, but coming up very, very fast, um, and one of my favourites is li um, licensing and syncing. And I think licensing and syncing to me is one of the most important things. I mean, we've got Vanilla Fudge on um, the uh, label and their song was in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the last Quentin Tarantino movie, where Brad Pitt, remember the fight scene in the end when he threw the can and hit the guy in the head? Yeah, yeah. That was their song. Um, you know, that's extraordinary money for a band. Rat just got, um, Stephen Pearce, he just got round and around in the Geico commercial. Mm -hmm. um, and that was excellent money. So, you, you know, that's also the future. Um, yeah. We're doing a lot of, um, uh, I'm doing a big project with Michael DeBars at the moment where he's covering some incredible songs from the 70s, 80s, 90s and 2000s. Um, and they, once they're recorded properly with guest stars, they potentially have a huge syncing audience where nice. you potentially could go in and, uh, you know, let's say you've got a T-Rex song that the estate will say, well, we want 250000 if you're going to use that song. And I'm talking hypothetical numbers. Mm -hmm. um, you could go in and use, get the same song for fifty grand. Yes, you've got to pay them a royalty, but you're still getting the song in. Um, and the person, so the person that's recorded it, um, the label, the estate, everyone's making money from it, which is great, mm -hmm. which is great. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that, you know, thinking and licensing is certainly another very um, viable 
uh, revenue stream. And then, as I said, you know, there's other ways to create and push the um, the audience and new fans to the music, whether it's playing it over a video, whether it's, you know, our, our aims at the moment is as our fighters walk out into the UFC, um, out into a pay-per-view event, they're playing a single. So let's say Riley's LA Guns, right? We've got a new single coming out in October uh, and then the album's out um, at some point next year. Their first single, it's played for the first time and coordinated with a fighter walking out to a pay-per-view event in Vegas or wherever it is around the world in London um, to in front of millions of people. And it's down the bottom what the song is, et cetera. That's the future. That's that's spreading your wings and making sure that you're creating more audiences and getting music to people that have never heard of that band before, potentially, or they have heard of it, but they haven't heard of the song. So you just got to be creative and entrepreneurial all the way. And mm-hmm. I think that's what um, is, is, is setting us apart. I'm not saying there isn't other great labels out there. There is, of course there is. But I just think we think a little bit differently and I don't get caught up in the bullshit or the red tape. I've got no time for it at all. Mm-hmm. Is radio important, like regular radio these days? I, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Well, honestly, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, talk to a um, uh, a um, a band about getting a radio plug. I think it's a waste of fucking money. I really mm-hmm. do. I mean, in Australia, it's a joke. It is really it? is a joke. It's a joke. They're playing things from the 90s and they're playing things from 2000. They're not interested. Yeah, I mean, they I play something new. They won't. I remember... We had a band on the label. We still got the back catalogue. Um, great band called Ash and Moon, mm. and um, which featured Gary Gary Beers from In Excess. Um, lead singer was Toby Rand, and he um, was on that um, hardcore, uh, not hardcore, um, a rock star supernova. I remember all yeah, that yeah, with yeah. the NXS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I can't remember if he won it or came second. Whatever, he got a good name on it. He's a great singer. And so you've got a high-profile singer like him, you got Gary Beers from one of the greatest bands to come out of Australia in excess. And in the week, there's a radio station in Australia. I won't say who it is, but there's a radio station, top, top rock station, as they call it in Australia. And um, the, you know what? Fuck it. Triple M. Yeah, fuck them. I mean, they should do a better job. I mean, it's ridiculous. So Triple M in Sydney, um, who says that they're rock and roll, it's, they don't give any new people a go. They've got these homegrown shows and all this stuff. It's all bullshit. It's just mm-hmm. bullshit. No content on there that's helping any Australian bands other than ones that have had albums out 20 years ago. And they've got to be called out for it. It's bullshit. Same as Triple J here in Australia. Everyone thinks Triple J is the Messiah. It's not. They're not even playing guitar bands anymore. They Mm. they don't have the power that they used to. It's as simple as that. So Mm. I say to bands, they say, oh, radio, don't worry about it. We've got many other ways we're going to get your music out. But I'll tell you this story. So Mm. Ash and Moon had a fucking brilliant song. We tried to get it on Triple M. Not only were they not interested, this was the week that they awarded in excess one of the top awards. I can't remember what it was. It was a few, it was about a year and a half ago. It was like this top award, the the you know, the number one Australian band of all time in excess. This the, the, the fucking bass player was in Ash and Moon. He'd written and recorded these songs. He'd spent a fortune on the production, some of the best production I've ever seen and heard in Ash and Moon. Not only would they not play the song. But they interviewed them, which was great. But they played the song behind the interview. I mean, that's not uh, supporting. Why, while they were doing the interview? Yeah, that's not supporting Australian music. I support Australian music. They're not supporting Australian music. I'm supporting international music. We take Aussie bands to the world, with, and et cetera, et cetera. We bring international bands all around. I've got bands from Israel to Italy, from South Africa to South America. You name it, we've got bands here. Yeah. That's, that's not supporting music, putting the brand new single behind an interview no, that's, that's just crap. madness who is making these decisions joe who's yeah. making who is saying forget aussie music but who is supporting music in general when you won't play a new song do you that's find just, the same thing happens in the u.s look u.s is a little bit different so uh, that, that's australia u.s is a little bit different college radio used to be very very strong but over covid there was no one at college. So right. the, the you know, so there was no one listening. No one listening, um, yeah. I think that, the, you know, Sirius FM and I think that the digital channels and the internet channels are still important. Um, I don't think that they necessarily have um, the the clout that they used to. I still think they're important, though, um, because of your audience, your your mass 
um, population. Mm. You've just got a mass population. I mean, don't forget Australia's only 25 million or 25, 26, 27 million. You've got 250, don't you? 260, 270, 280 million people there. Yeah. It's yeah. Australia and America are the same size. And you've got times 10 to what we've got here. Mm. So you've got that population that actually makes a difference. It's like some bands. Look, when you're putting out a piece of music today and you are uh, no record label in the world, whether you're Universal, um, Sony, Golden Robot, Frontiers, Pavement, whoever it is, none of us have the money to take an album and spend millions of dollars in every region. It's just a complete... It just doesn't happen, doesn't work. However, what you need to do is put the album out globally. Yes, you have a marketing and PR campaign, and yes, you've got money um, around uh, uh, um, uh, to push the album out or the single out or the EP out or whatever it is. So you're getting to the bloggers, you're getting to reviewers, you're getting your press release out. Um, you've got your own contacts that are going to write about it. You've got this, you've got that. So you've got all that standard stuff that happens anyway. The band's doing interviews, um, et cetera, et cetera. When we did Riley's LA Guns, Renegades, you know, if they didn't do 500, 600 interviews in that month, they did nothing. Um, so you get out there and do that. But what's important, and this is what I was saying before about us being old school and new school. I talked about the old school, and that's an old school approach. But the new school approach which is so important to make sure that you bookend your old school approach. The new school is when you do release an album like that, you've got to watch the data. So for example, if that album is spiking in Germany where there's 85 million people, you'll put money behind it in Germany and you'll make it a success sure. in Germany. Then you'll use the success in Germany and you'll bring that across to the rest of Europe. And then you'll start filtering it back into the United States so that is much better to do than to pay a radio plugger to get it on the radio and it's a hit and miss. You could spend $100,000 there in the US and it might not work. This other way potentially will work better. Chris Murphy, who used to be um, the manager of NXS and sadly passed away um, 18 months ago, his famous saying was, if there's a crack in the wall, I'll drive a truck through it. And that's the way to release. If you see a spike, you go for it. And you make it a success in that region. And then you take that success and you multiply it across Europe and then into America. So because Europe these days is still very much magazines. There's still print media in Europe Are where they? everything is. Yeah, where everything in the it's still classic rock magazine in Germany um, and all those kind of magazines in, the, in London, in the UK, et cetera, et cetera. But in America, it's very much online. Mm -hmm. So you can take everything that we've done in Europe and you can bring it across with articles, et cetera, in America and it works for you. So there is definitely a method to the madness. Um, you know, as yeah. I say, not everything is, is right. Look, as we've made mistakes, we learn from our mistakes. I've wasted money. Um, I've done things um, that I don't regret anything, but I've learned from, we've learned as a company. Um, sure. But pe people don't realise um as I said before, we're not saving kids' lives, but where you know there's a lot of money that goes into this, mm -hmm. um, and I'm spending my children's inheritance for sure. <laughs> um, um, but well, I they're, think that, they're involved with you too, right? Well, yeah, Jagger worked for us for a couple of years. He's not working for me at the moment because, you, listen, you know what it's like. Well, I don't know whether I don't know how how old your kids are, but you know I've got a 19 year old. Um, son, I mean, this company started because of him, as you go, right. you know, I told you mm -hmm. the story. Um, he made an hour, he was on Australia's Got Talent, like America's Got Talent when he was 10, popped out of that, nearly won it. He made an out. We put him together with some older guys. Um, they made an incredible album. I shopped it around, nobody was interested. And I thought, fuck it, I'll do it myself. And Golden Robot started because I gave them all a little Golden Robot like that. And that's how that's it started awesome. with one band. Yeah. Do you and, sell those you know, things? You should sell those. Yeah, you know what? You can't get this little one anymore. You can get the big one. You uh -huh. can't get the little one. I noticed Paco Raban came out with this new aftershave recently. Um, so <laughs> that, I've had you a had to get that. Totally. So, yeah. uh, you know, so ultimately, um, um, you know, you, you've got to be, as you can see, we've talked for half an hour or whatever is it now, is that, you know, it's it's an entrepreneurial flair that you need to have to do this differently. Um, I just don't want to be... Um, the same as everybody else. I'm not interested. I'm trying to leave a legacy with this and 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 have a rock and roll, large rock and roll family. Well, you're kicking ass. You've only been doing it what six years, seven years? Six or seven years. I, I think so. I mean, there's band, there's 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 labels that we're up against that have been going for 20, 30, 40 years. And I think yeah. we're kicking some of the asses. But yeah. 
It's the other thing too. You can get really burnt out in this industry. Um, you can get jaded, and you can get um, you can get over it. And I think that's the one thing I hear a lot is people really get enthused by our passion and our approach. And I, I'm tired because I work very hard and I work long hours, but I'm not jaded. There's a big difference mm-hmm. between being jaded in an industry um, and being uh, uh, just tired from hard work, you know, and you need a couple of days off, then you feel better again. Sure. Uh, but I, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I got to say, I wake up every day and I feel pretty honoured to be in this position. Yes, I've created this with a great team, but I feel honoured to be. I, I, so I'll give you a great example. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's pivotal moments, right? As I said to you before, we just signed Brett Scallion from Fuel. Now he's a he's a he's a bona fide rock star. He had mm-hmm. some great success with Fuel. Great success. I've been married a few times, and I've had kid. My kids were with my first wife. My two kids. And that was many years ago. The first, so I met my my first wife in, I think, 99 or, or, or 98 or something like that, whatever it is. When you've had a few wives, the the, the dates just seem to. Um, my my <laughs> last wife, my wife that I've got now, I've got tatted on my arm, 15th of the ninth, 16, because that was the date that we met. I have to have it tatted on uh, my arm. You can't do that stuff. <laughs> no, you can't have the name. You can't have the name. You can have a tate, but you can't have the name. Well, I, I got, never have it. I got aces up on here four aces because we got married in vegas but i yeah, wouldn't they, do the well, name so did i, oh, I did got you? married in vegas too yeah yeah nice. so so we met on the 15th of the 9th 16 and the anniversary is coming up and we got married on the third of the first 17 so four months later we were married by elvis in in vegas <laughs> um, but the 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 story was so my first wife our first date ever which was you know late 90s i took to her to fuel so I love fuel. So here I am on the first date with my my first wife, seeing a fuel concert in Sydney, was over the moon. And then how many ever years later, I've signed Brett in a band on my label. So I was stoked. And I met That's Brett great. in LA in April and I told him the story. And it's just, you know, it's just cool. I just love that. And I feel honoured to be in that position. And, mate, I've got, you know, I've got, so many stories like that. I mean, then Guns has got Navarone as the lead singer. His mother is Priscilla Presley. I mean, Chloe Trillo, who's Rob Trillo from Metallica's wife, mm-hmm. is in the band on the label. And I've got so many different connections to different things that, you know, I grew up with Metallica. Um, um, you know, who doesn't know Elvis or Priscilla Presley? Mm-hmm. So it's just cool to that we've got these different stories and these different arcs in our relationships with different artists. It's I yes, that's great. It's really wonderful to be in that position. Do you um ever find yourself like fanboying when you when you're talking to some of these guys that you're gonna sign and only but, only when I talk to you? Well, as you should. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now you know, like like Devo yeah. or you know, any any of those yeah. bands that you listened to when you were younger, and now here you are putting them on your label. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, I always love the answer. I thought Answer were one of the, the best Irish bands out of Ireland other than you two. Um, I'm doing a Died Pretty album. I love Died Pretty. I like it. They're a couple of older albums we're licensing from Sony. Um, you know, Rose Tattoo, doing the Johnny Thunder stuff. I, the list, Gilby Clark. I mean, I've mm-hmm. sat in Gilby's garage while he's building his motorcycles on mm-hmm. very on many occasions. And he was one of the pivotal forces in Gunners when um, Izzy left. Sure, sure. So, you know, and there he is just tinkering away on his motorcycle. So, yeah, there's been a lot of... Um, there's been a lot of those moments, but the, the stuff I love at the best is mostly I've got Jagger with me, my son, mm. um, and he's grown up over the last 10 years, you know, meeting all these guys. And I have to say, nine times out of 10, the people that I deal with are good blokes, you know, the Phil X's of the world. I mean, this this cat's out there um, playing with Bon Jovi every night, and here we are on Zoom laughing and talking about something, you know, um, ridiculous. Uh, just the good people, Tammy from... Um, faster pussycat i had a bagel in los angeles with him at uh, Cantor's jewish deli um in in april or may whenever it was i mean what a lovely guy with so many stories to yeah, tell he's great you know, busy reed longest member of guns and roses outside axel you know i've had many dinners with um um john sykes in the early days and so there's there's a lot of good people that you know the guy the boys from hollywood stars i mean um ruben who was in um um uh steppenwolf 
You know, I mean, fucking hell. I mean, you know, there's it, some really, you know, Michael DeBars and Tony Franklin and all, you know, there's just so many different people that we deal with. And then there's the bands coming up and coming through um, that could be the big thing, um, could be the next big thing. And that's exciting as well, because I often wonder with this company, um, you know, is it going to be um, an LA Guns getting a number one hit or is it going to be um, a new band out of uh, the UK like Roller or the Ruby Tuesdays or Cavalcade or San Quentin or any of those amazing bands? Could it be them or the Dangerines out of Canada? Could it be them that could be the next... Um, uh, what's that? The Led uh, Greta Van Fleet. You know, mm. could they be the next Greta Van Fleet? Could they be the next Strokes? Could they be, you know, the next Jack White? That's right. exciting, and that's and I think the way to sort of sum up what I'm doing is I'm not going to the casino and putting a million dollars on sixteen red. I'm going and splitting it up on every number. I'm sort of hedging my bets a little bit and backing all these different type of bands. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where our head's at at the moment. And I've changed a little bit too. Normally I just do global deals and I like to be in control. But lately I've gone out after uh, after bigger stuff and just mm -hmm. doing a strike. Zealand just to get in bed with the band mm -hmm. and that's also something I've started to do I've, I'm going to announce in the next few weeks some really big stuff that we're working on and it's it's exciting yeah yeah well you went into I don't think you had um your your entertainment division last time we spoke did you uh, the, sports the sports division yeah that's that's growing I mean I do a lot of podcasting like you and we do a lot of productions and a lot of different things however um that sports and entertainment division grew out of that. And I've got to say, just last night, um, I'm doing the contract at the moment, we're signing our first fighter to manage. So our sports and entertainment division, where it was sponsoring fighters, we're now managing fighters. Wow. So okay. we're, putting the, we're putting the Golden Robot brand on these fighters, but we're actually got a division now where it's managing them and taking them to the world and doing sponsorship deals for them. And, and, and that can benefit our music and our artists in incredible ways. So yeah, that's that's all just flourished out of the sports and entertainment sponsoring side. So it's it's an ever growing beast by mm -hmm. osmosis, just spreading it like wildfire, spreading like, like a fungus. <laughs> and you talk about wildfire. Oh my god, I just did myself the biggest dis disservice. I don't work hard enough. I, 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 uh -oh. I you know, it's not uh -oh. as if I don't work hard enough. I I did the stupidest thing two weeks ago. I started watching Game of Thrones again from the beginning. Um, and I've seen it all before, of course, but you get hooked in. So now I get up, I'm working at six in the morning, speaking to America. You speak to Europe in the afternoon. You finish work about eight o'clock, whatever, have dinner. Oh my God, then I start watching Game of Thrones. I'm like, I'm, I just hit series and I've seen it all, but all right. it was so long ago, you forget everything. And it's so brilliant. So now I'm up till fucking 12 o'clock at night, one o'clock at night, uh, <laughs> watching Game of Thrones. Oh, I should Sounds never like have started me. it. Sounds like me, except I'm up here doing podcast shit and stuff. I don't, you know, I've never seen Game of Thrones, ever. I'm on I, I don't get to watch TV. I mean, we talked a little bit before we got on here. You know, I'm busy. I don't, I'd like to. I just can't. Bet. I'm doing 15 hour days. I'm finding time. You got to find time. You got to, look, I find yeah, and, I, and I'll say this, you know, on your show. I also watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I, <laughs> I, 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 I like reality TV. I like to take myself out of my own head. Yeah. So watching reality TV, you know, the Love Islands, and there's a big show in Australia called The Block, which is about, you know, they get five houses and redo them or whatever. Uh -huh. um, whatever it is, I like to watch it. I like reality TV. My wife likes it as well, and we sit there and just get lost in something for an hour. It, yeah. it's it's very it's very um yeah it's very it's very interesting um <laughs> you should do a you know, golden robot reality tv show well i read i yeah we do do a lot of filming we're actually yeah. working at the moment about a day in the life of golden robot we've been filming it um non-stop in la etc so we, yes we are working on something at the nice. moment i'd love to see that i would make time and watch that oh, that's, <laughs> maybe you maybe you'll be in it <laughs> but put me in it i'm there for you <laughs> we spoke a little bit about you know the Greta Van Fleets and you know up and coming bands do you think that we will ever see another rock star band like that big um, band rock band let me say rock band well, yeah I do 
I do really you? do. I hope so, because that's what I'm putting all my money yeah. into. Mm-hmm. So I think I think the world's got a lot of bands, but I don't think the world's got any true rock stars anymore. You know, mm-hmm. the Michael Hutchins or the um, Jim Morrison uh, or the Bon Scott. Um, I, I, I would be, you know, there's some fabulous artists out there, there's some fabulous lead singers out there, but they were all another level. They were all another level. So, you know, is there a true rock star out there anymore? Um, I don't know so much mm-hmm. in the essence of what, you know, Michael Hutchins used to be or, or, or um, any of those lead singers. You know, David Lee Roth in his day, not now, but in his day, mm-hmm. um, uh, what, what they did for that band. They were as well known. Look, this is the thing. You think about it. If a band was going to be on the front cover of Rolling Stone magazine, in those days, they just had the lead singer on the front cover. It doesn't happen anymore because there's no one with that stature. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, maybe, um, you know, in our conversation, if we really thought about it, maybe we would think of a few, but no one pops to mind at the moment. But there is, I'm not saying there's not some great artists. Of course there is. And we have a lot of great artists and a lot of great lead singers. But as a standalone rock star, I think the world needs more rock stars is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Not attitudes, um, not the Liam Gallagher attitude of the old <laughs> days, but certainly rock stars. Um, but I do. I mean, is a band going to go and sell 50 million albums on their debut like um, uh, Guns N' Roses did? Is a band going to drop back in black like ACDC did and sell, you know, 40 million copies? I hope so. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I hope so. Is it possible? I do think it's possible. Um, I do think it's possible. I think, in fact, I've got to say, I think to potentially the reach is even greater. Well, it is. It's greater now because they didn't have digital. Um, they didn't have the reach. You can get into a young Indian boy's um, lounge room in India because of Spotify or a you know 25-year-old Chinese girl in China because of Spotify and the digital platforms. You couldn't necessarily do that in 1980 when Back in Black came out. Well, you, mm-hmm. not necessarily, you couldn't. You couldn't. It was a physical mm-hmm. product or it was a radio. So you're getting into these homes and these um, situations that you couldn't get into before. Yes, there's a the whole conjecture that the band doesn't make as much money, but if you're selling multiples like you should, they can actually make okay money. Should Spotify pay them more money? Absolutely, they should. Should there be a greater cut for the... Um, maybe one day. Uh, yeah, maybe they will. And that's why predominantly the deals... Look, there's some shit deals out there for bands, but I always make sure that I go 50-50 with the bands. I keep it very fair. I know labels that give bands 13%, 20%. We go 50-50 with the bands, like it's a true partnership to mm-hmm. give them the best chance possible to make some money and get some revenues, some streaming revenue and some physical revenue, et cetera. But I think it can, to answer your question, I think it can. I think you can, and I hope eventually, you know, we have a, the biggest band on the planet like Led Zeppelin. I mean, as you know, with me, everything starts and ends with Zeppelin. Everything. There's four. That's your band. Yeah, there it is there with Bonham's signature, et cetera, above me every day. But I think... I think ultimately, yeah, I, I hope there is the opportunity and I'd love to be involved in it with a band. I mean, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing here. So, look, it's all about, as I said to you earlier on, it's all about a great song. It's all about the right marketing plan, but it's then got to resonate with the globe. Mm-hmm. It's got to resonate. And the only way it's going to resonate if we is if we get, as the label, the narrative correct and it's authentic and genuine. Nobody in middle America or um, the out- outskirts of Germany or the hills of Italy are going to resonate with anything unless it's authentic and genuine because they'll mm-hmm. see straight through it, especially today. With all the sure. bullshit that goes on in America in politics, with all the stuff that goes on around the world with COVID, with everything else, people just want to get back down to what's genuine and what's real. And guess what's genuine and real, folks? Rock and Rock roll. And roll yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it, man. Mm-hmm. And that's why I believe coming back because that's what the world not only wants, but it needs. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Tell me about that hardcore su- superstar record back there. Keeps staring at me and that's a great band, but I find and myself when I bring that band up, a lot of people don't know about them. Yeah. Look, it's at, or at least over here in the U S yeah, they're a Swedish heart, um, heavier band. Um, it certainly sold over them. We sold a lot of albums to the US, but you know, it's it's they're a great band. There's a couple of really good bands coming out of um, well, they have for a while out of Sweden. Sweden in particular, there's 
um, you know, hardcore superstar crash diet, ammo track. And, um, you know, we've got a lot of bands um, out of Europe, Ganache and, and, and ancient settlers and um, et cetera, et cetera, bands, bands like that, that are on our um, crusader label. Um, but, you know, the 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 act of denials and the king zebras and the Black rivers and all these toxic roses and all these great last temptation these bands are playing these bands are playing around the world and they're ultimately um getting a good audience i spoke to you know la cobra last night from south africa they're a great band and people are finding out who they are wild street out in new york is playing this this eric the lead singer plays so many shows um that he keeps having to change band members because no one can keep up with him. He's I just saw he was looking for band members. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, no one can keep up with the the, the passion and the drive that this that this guy has. And I just I just think that's remarkable. They yeah. he will do anything to keep that band going. And that's the kind of people you want on your label because I do the same for him, and he does the same back. You know, the bands that go out there and go, oh, we'll go with the label now. Let them do everything. That's wrong. We've got to work as a team. We've got to work together. And that's how it works. But you know, I, I implore your audience to get on a hardcore superstar. They're a great band. This Love this them. album's good. They're coming to Australia soon. And I think they've got a couple of other tours after that. Yeah, it's really exciting. I need to get them over here. I never see them yeah. around here. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Yeah. Where are you based? I'm in South Carolina. I'm in the Myrtle Beach area. Mm. You ever been there? Yeah, that's beautiful down there. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Um and you have two homes, LA and Australia, right? Yeah, well, I spent time in LA, and we've got yeah a bit of a setup in Australia. I've recently um got a um uh, like a little farm, little sort of property out outside of Sydney, which is definitely my saving grace because you know putting that fire on a bit of fresh air is fantastic. So mm-hmm. I I have that sort of city country living, which is which is awesome. You like going and back to I'm LA? Not there, I miss it. Sorry, you like going back to LA? I love LA. I think LA for the music business is unbelievable. LA, and New York, but look, LA, New York, Nashville, and and Austin, but LA is definitely the leader. There's some fabulous managers I work with there, and um, you know the, the the Andy Goulds and Mark Pollacks and Eric Bakers and Paul Gaganos and all these um uh, fabulous managers that I work with on a daily basis are all in mm-hmm. LA, and when I come over there, it's like seeing family. But um uh. LA's got its own problem, I and mean, the homeless problem in LA yeah. is unbelievably. That's out of what control. I hear. I haven't been there. I used to live out that way, but I've been over here about nine years now. But I hear the homeless population is out of control. It's out of control, mate. It, mm. It's very sad to hear that. I don't know what they're doing about it. Um, uh, I heard that LA County is now, uh, sorry, Beverly Hills District mm. is now, um, which is where the bulk of the problem is, has now mm. banned cigarettes. It's like what? tobacco. And tobacco like that's going to help the problem yeah, it's like i don't know what i don't know what people are thinking so yeah. it's 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 a bit mate i had i was there just before covid and then for obviously that two years we couldn't travel and i went back in april the minute i could travel i went back to la and i did a month and you know I'm, i I enjoy my networking so we got back on top of that and um you know saw all the managers and saw richard patrick from filter and, and went out for dinner with i got like a, got a whole lot of bands together and we all went out for dinner etc that's but funny. I couldn't believe the difference in the two years of the of the the homeless problem, it's and scary. it is a major problem. You can't walk down any street without. And look, it's, yes, you can deal with it, but the issue obviously is the mental health issue, mm-hmm. and the fact that if you're not, you know, you've got certain people coming up screaming at you, wanting to fight you, and if you don't have your wits about you, and you go, "Well, fuck, I'm not putting up with that," and you start fighting, I mean, well, what is that? Yeah. So it's it's it is it is scary. It, it's scary and it's a problem, and I've got no idea what they're going to do about it. I don't know what I, if I was in politics, I don't know what I'd do about it. It's 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 you know these are human beings. It's mm. it's 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 really scary. It's a and it's a someone said to me before I left, I don't think you realize how bad the homeless problem is. I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. And I was shocked. I was and shocked. Saw it. Yeah, yeah. It's full I hate on. to hear that. But anyway, so Mark, you're doing great things. Love what you're doing. Um, and I'm excited to see what happens in the future for Golden Robot. I'm, I'm, I'm really, uh, I could announce a couple of things that we're working on at the moment, but I will, we won't leave it so long till I come on. Let's try and do it, you know, every three to six months or something, do even a quick catch up. And because at the end of the day, you know, it, it's, it, if your audience can go to our, you know, goldenrobotrecords.com and jump on the labels and look down and 
find other bands from other countries that they're into. That's great for everybody. That's what yeah. keeps this this crazy wheel moving forward. And it's yeah, I definitely. appreciate I appreciate what you do, and I appreciate the support that you give. Um, you know, the rock and roll community. It's guys like you that are pivotal, really pivotal to the success of bands and artists and labels um, because you're a voice out there and you're a supporter. So I thank you for what you do as well. All right. Anytime. You're welcome. And thank you. I mean, whatever, whatever you need, you let me know. We'll do it. Thanks, buddy. You're a good man. All right, man. Well, listen, goldenrobotrecords.com. Everybody can go there, check out all your bands, all your labels, listen to them. A lot of great bands on there. Hey, when real before we go, when is uh you got a date for Fast Pussycat? <laughs> yeah, we we talked about it last night actually. I um, I tame in and Paul and their manager on and our team. Uh I believe we are going to come out with a um a double A side single. I think October, no, yeah, I think around October. Um there'll be um there's going to be a new EP um with potentially six tracks on it. And there'll be a, a double A side single coming out. I believe it's October, another one November, and then February ish, March. There'll be the EP coming out. And we'll make sure we do that on a physical product as well. And I could tell awesome. you, I've heard it and it's, they're on fire, man. They yeah. are on fire. I they're. can't wait to hear them. I had Chad on the show not too long ago, and, yeah. and Fast Pussycat yeah. did a show here in Myrtle Beach, and we had him do an in store over at Ret- Retroactive, and that was a blast. Such a great band and such a good bunch of guys. And um, Chad, I was with at the 50th anniversary of the Rainbow in April when Stephen Piercy was basically the headliner. And he's a great guy. And I sealed the deal with Tammy a week later over a bagel in, in LA. And then, you know, we've been, awesome. then they've gone out the road with um, Tracy's LA Guns and Tom Kiefer. And um, they've just mm. got back off that. And from what I hear, and this is not my opinion because I didn't see it, but from what I hear from a lot of good sources, Faster Pussycat was consistently the best band on that tour. I didn't see that tour, but like I said, they did play here, a one-off show here, and they yeah. sounded great. Yeah. Of course, I yeah. was surprised, actually, because you never know what you're going to get, you know, with the, yeah. with some of the bands like that. But they well, sounded... Ronnie Simmons. Ronnie's uh, in the band. He's an Aussie. The, the, yeah. the young uh-huh. He's an Aussie player. Um so they got, I think, you know, they, they do. They've got a, it's a great lineup and mm-hmm. they've got great songs and they're a powerful rock and roll band. That's what rock and roll is to me. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, buddy. Well, I know you're busy. I know you got things to do. So uh, listen, you got my information. Reach out anytime you want to come on. I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much for your time. All right, man.